Hi, everyone. Welcome to True Disabled Story. My name is Nico, and I use he, him pronouns. I'm a white man with parted blonde hair, large blue and brown spectacles, and a uh, dark gray t-shirt with a Star Wars logo on it. I'm seated in front of a blurred out background, uh, and I've also got a black headset around my head. Like roughly 25% of Americans and a full 17% of Philadelphians, I'm disabled. Whether we look locally, nationally, or globally, disabled communities are full of dynamic, diverse, and frankly delightful people with their own stories to tell. All we have to do is listen. As many of you know, I was born disabled. I've never known differently, and how I've handled my diagnosis has changed throughout my life. So when I work with other disabled people, whether that's personally, professionally, or in my ever-expanding civic life, uh, I'm naturally curious uh, about their stories, their experiences, and their perspectives. Today, I'm honored and quite lucky uh, to be joined by my old friend, Chris, uh, with Define Yourself. I can't wait to hear what Chris has to say. And for those of you with eagle eyes, you'll notice that Chris is also a guest on my previous work as well. So. Always happy to check in. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so very much for having me. Had a blast the last time that we've spoken. You've been on my pod, uh, previous podcast as well. And if I may, I'd like to briefly give a visual description of myself in case you uh, need that, actually. Uh, I am a, uh, a male. Uh, I, I, you know, pronounce he, him. I don't really do a lot of the pronouns, but that's what I would go by if you wanted to assign a pronoun to me. I am wearing glasses because I'm visually impaired. I um, have short um, kind of gray hair is not because I'm old. I just have so much wisdom it pushed the color out of my hair. That's what I like to tell people. I'm wearing a blue polo shirt with a white lettering on it that says hashtag DFIS, hashtag define yourself. That's my business name. Have a ball cap that's also blue with the same kind of marking on it. Got white headphones. I'm coming to you live. Well, actually, this is recorded. That's right. Okay, I'm live for Nico. Rest of you is recorded from my home office in Southwest Missouri. And behind me is my wall of achievements because I'm very big on um, building self-confidence and achieving success uh, no, regardless of what your disability is. So on my wall is my wall of achievements and accomplishments I have earned in my life despite my multiple disabilities. And once again, thank you for having me. Of course, Chris. Thank you so much. So, Chris, what was your diagnostic journey like? Uh, was this something that maybe you were pursuing or did it take you totally by surprise? I know you have numerous stories to share, so I just want to give you space to, to give that introduction. Sure, yes. I am a person with multiple disabilities, as I mentioned earlier. I'm visually impaired. I was born with CRS, which is congenital rebella syndrome, which basically means my mom was exposed to the German measles while she was carrying me. So I was born with cataracts. So I've been legally blind all my life. So uh, in, in a similarity with Nico, uh, I was born this way. So there's no real diagnosis or having to say, oh, wow, my world has changed. It's always been this way. So uh, that that is one of them. The other one is when I was in my mid thirties, while I was engaged to um, who my wife now, I survived a incomplete spinal cord injury, which is known as a ischemic stroke to my spinal cord that occurred during surgery. And I lost the ability to run, walk, or even stand. And for a while, I lost the ability to take care of a lot of my ADLs on my own. And just recently, I, I'm not sure when this is dropping, but I, I know it was, uh, we did this in June, uh, about June, what was it? I'm trying to do the date. June 13th, I went in and it had been a two-year journey to do this. Uh, I went in and, and this is the first show I'm announcing it on, at least on the recording dates. Uh, I have been officially diagnosed on the autism spectrum. So those are the three things that I have, um, my, my three multiple disabilities. And we can dive into any of those and, and discuss those journeys. Fantastic, Chris. Thank you. Uh, I can definitely tell that there is a contrast between the conditions with which you were born uh, and then the conditions that you had to kind of pursue. It took you two years for that autism diagnosis. Yes. Does that strike you as a long time or? <clears throat> it felt long, but in the autism community, and, and, and I'm in some groups um, for people who are late diagnosed, which I fall in that category, uh, uh, there's a lot of people who self 
identify as autistic because getting an autism diagnosis as an adult can be very challenging because of insurances. I was very fortunate, um, ironically, that my insurance fully covered my um, testing, which I'm very grateful for. And I've heard stories that it could take two, three, four, five, six years a lo uh, a longer to get a diagnosis. Mine, very fortunately, took only two years. It seemed like a very long time, a very uh, a time full of a lot of questions about am I am I on the right track? Is this really who I am, or um, is this um, or am I wrong? And I just wanted answers. It seemed long, but in reality, it was short compared to other people's journeys. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate that further detail. Uh, I love hearing that your diagnosis, even though it took, I guess you know, two years to me is a long time, right? Even though it took that two years, it did give you some answers uh, yes. and, and put some questions to rest in your head. Fantastic. My second question asks, what impact have your diagnoses had on your life? This is also pretty open-ended, uh, but people have taken it to consider like how their diagnoses have affected their personal life, have affected them maybe emotionally, professionally. So I uh, just want to give you more space to paint that picture. Sure. Yes. Uh, now, uh, for the audience's benefit, we're taping this about eight days after I received my official diagnosis. So still sinking in some. But when when um, well, I have a counselor and he got the results from a, psych a psychologist and, and uh, emailed it to me. I was really nervous about uh, getting this because, like, I know that I am. And I just wanted the validation because I like I like to be honest and, and truthful to people. I don't want to I, I don't advocate self diagnosis, although I understand why it's so accepted in the autism community because the barriers to get that later in life is are hard. So I had my wife read it to me and she read it to me and I fought back a tear and it's kind of weird because like, why am I crying? And it was a cry of like happiness and relief. And I thought, how many people are going to feel relieved to find out they're on the autism spectrum? Because, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, further any stereotypes, but uh, it it can be challenging for a person on the spectrum. But the reason I was crying with joy is, yes, I'm right about this. I'm not crazy. This I, Everything that has happened in my life before that did not make sense to me now makes sense. I don't like making excuses for anything, but now I can understand why I have some behaviors that I had when I was younger, or why I, I um, get really uncomfortable and crowded in noisy situations. So it gave me a sense of relief. I'm still processing it. Because like I said, it was eight days ago when we, we got the uh, news. Uh, but... Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful journey. It, it gives me an identity. I feel like I'm in three different, I, I'm like a unicorn. I'm in three different disability um, uh, cultures, uh, being visually impaired, physically disabled, and I'm now in the uh, officially uh, fully in the neurodiverse community um, with the autism. And I, I feel of all three, and I like all communities, I'm not trying to put anyone down, I feel most connected with the people in the neurodiverse community because they seem to understand me more than the others because I I kind of say what I feel and 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 all, and sometimes a little bit blunt, and that's uh, rubs some people the wrong way, but in the autism community, um, we're kind of blunt at times, and no wonder everyone thought I was from Britain all my life <laughs> because I have autism. So anyway, I, I hope I'm answering the question there. I mean, I think so. Uh, it's been wonderful to hear uh, that, you know, again, that autism diagnosis didn't give you that validation. Yes. Um, you mentioned that you don't like to make excuses, and I can respect that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, reasons are not necessarily excuses. Right, there's a difference. Reasons. That's right. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic. So, Chris, you've been on this magical unicorn journey, as you mentioned. <laughs> uh, if anybody out there is dealing with um, perhaps multiple diagnoses, or is kind of starting out on a path similar to yours, what advice would you have for them? Well, if you have multiple disabilities, hey, congratulations, welcome to my club. Um, not a not a large club, not one you really want to be a member of, but hey, welcome, I, I welcome you in. Uh, but if you have multiple disabilities, embrace all of them, be proud of all of them. I know July is Disability Pride Month. We should always we should not just be pride 
trifle of our disabilities in Ju July. It should be 365. It should be Disability Pride Year every single year. But that's another topic for another day. But you should embrace them. Get involved in the respective communities that you are a member of. Be supportive. Be encouraging. Ask questions. Uh, answer other people's questions because you may know more than somebody else in the community because you, you've had the diagnosis longer. And you can help them. So um, get involved in that. And if you suspect you have a diagnosis or you have a condition, do some research. Remember, Google is not an MD. So don't don't self-diagnose yourself, if at all possible. But what I did was I, I did a lot of research. I uh, wrote down a list of 80 plus reasons why I suspected I was on the spectrum. I went and saw my physician. And I told her, I'm having a lot of trouble with sound and noise because noise disorientates me, makes me cranky and all with a lot of conversations or my wife runs the TV 24 hours a day and drives me up a wall. And she said, oh, that's not uncommon for somebody who's on the spectrum. And the way she said it was like, don't you know that you're on the spectrum? Hasn't anyone diagnosed you with that? So that kind of encouraged me and, and all. But you you got to advocate for yourself. I, I say this about my incomplete spinal cord injury that robbed me of my ability to run, walk, or even stand. Any disability, you got to advocate for yourself. No one else is going to do it. And no one has more of a vested interest in your best interest than you. Don't let anyone take that away from you. Be, be proud of who you are. Be proud of the way that um, you were um, created, that you've evolved in life. If you're a person of faith, be proud of the way that God made you the way that you are. Nothing happens to us. Everything happens for us. Be proud of that. Advocate for yourself. Stand up for your rights and um, be proud of who you are. Just be your authentic self. self. Don't try to hide behind an identity to fit in it with everybody else. Be who you are because you were made that way for a reason. And the world is full of neurotypical people. We need the neurodiverse people who are a little bit, think a little bit differently because that adds variety and entertainment and spice to everyone's life. Thank you, Chris. I think that's very actionable advice and I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I just think it's really wonderful. So, Here you mentioned things about defining yourself, finding your own way forward. And has that really paid off for you? Oh, yes. Yes, very much so. Uh, as you can see behind me, I have a wall of uh, successes that I've done. I, I've i earned certifications in coaching. I've won. Uh, I don't say won. I, I earned because winning, somebody handed it to you. I earned it. I earned recognition for my volunteer work at hospitals. I've been named co-disabled employee of the year back in about, I think it was 2000 or 2001 when I lived in uh, Northern California for convincing a company to hire me when they weren't hiring anyone while I had a white cane in my hand. So yes, it can be done to find yourself, be proud of who you are. Yes, definitely. It does work. You in No one's going to advocate for you more than you can advocate for yourself. Fantastic. Chris, thank you for jogging my memory. I was trying to remember one like really important sentence and you repeated it. So thank you. No one else is going to advocate for you the way that you can advocate for you. Other folks can support and love you very much, but they have to deal with themselves. Only you have that self-interest. And I think right. that's very and, valuable. And, and if I can interject something here, I know you work involved with um, the city of Philadelphia um, with disability-related issues. And Nico's a great guy. I've known him for a few years. And he can, he can do a lot of great things to help you. But he does not know, yeah. if you live in Philadelphia or wherever you live, wherever you are, he does not know what your specific needs are. So he can't advocate for you unless you speak up and advocate for yourself. So you do need to tell those that are, in, in, well, I hate to say in charge, but those that can help you what your needs are so you can have allies in advocating for what you want and need in life to succeed. Thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, it's a huge honor to be able to help other disabled Philadelphians. Uh, and it's, I'm very lucky and honored to kind of be in that position to help, to offer that help. All right, Chris, as we close our time together, I want to give you a chance that we as disabled people so rarely get, and that is a chance to brag about yourself, talk about any, you know, recent successes you have or upcoming successes. Uh, I know you had mentioned earlier not knowing when this would go live. The goal is to have this go live kind of second week of July, around like July 8, 9, 10. Uh, so to give you that sense of time frame, if you're interested in building a following, getting listeners or whatever, where can people find you online? 
But Chris, this is just an opportunity for you to be your own cheerleader. Let's hear it. Awesome. I should have brought some pom-poms. I didn't. Okay. Anyway, there's several things I'd like to talk about real quickly. One, I've written a new book called Success Starts with Self-Confidence. Ten Steps to Discover, Develop, and Grow Your Self-Confidence for the Neurodivergent and everybody else. Even though I'm neurodivergent and it's written from that perspective, anyone and everyone can benefit from this. Even if you're not disabled at all, this is a great book. It goes through the 10 steps I've used for the past um, 32 years. Yes, I'm that old. Uh, actually older than that, but <laughs> That I discovered, developed, and uh, grew my self-confidence to achieve the success that you see on my wall. Uh, I mentioned some of those earlier. I I have uh, been happily married for 21 years. And the reason I paused with that, because 22 years ago, ago, I got engaged, 21 married. So I always have to do the math there. Uh, so I've done that. And the way you can get that book is on Amazon. It's in Kindle format. It's in paperback format. And you can connect with me on my um, website, thechrismitchell.com, T-H-E-C-H-R-I-S-M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L.com. And from that site, you'll be able to order a personally autographed copy of this book if you're in the United States, international postage. I love my international people, but that postage kills you. So we can't do international at this time. And I have an awesome YouTube channel, which is called... Um, youtube.com slash the little at symbol the chris mitchell official where i have over 300 videos that will help you discover develop and grow your self-confidence so check all of that out and i'd love to hear from people leave comments send me an email i love to hear from people and i i read all of them and uh, respond to those that i'm able to so thank you for the opportunity for allowing me to share that with your wonderful audience nico yeah of course chris and i'll put all of those links that you mentioned in the video description all right, Chris Mitchell, always enjoy to check in with Chris. Chris is somebody that I've known a long time and who has always got a lot of cool projects and work going on. I'm glad you're doing well. Wherever you go, whatever you do, I'm rooting for you. Thank you again. Thank you very much.